Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's scripture affirmation. You know, sometimes we walk around and there's things that we need or things we need to accomplish or things that we just feel like, well, maybe I'll just try to do this on my own. I don't really need to talk to God about it or maybe God's not going to do it. Maybe he's not able to do it. You know, we may not say it, but our actions show it. When we try to do things on our own, we're not really trusting God to bring things to pass or supply our needs. And our needs are more than money. You know, sometimes people need healing in their body. Sometimes people just need some peace, some confirmation, some wisdom, some direction, some uh, something with their family members or, you know, uh, some direction in the vision that they have or the purpose that's for their life. And there's so many things, you know, people need comfort and strength and <clears throat> rest. And so when we think about what is God able really to provide for us? We say the scriptures that he will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But what do you really believe that he's able to do for you and do your actions show it? So what the verse is that I want to focus on today is a scripture that I use a lot. I'm sure we've covered it for um, some message before, several messages. And it's simply in Ephesians 3 and 20. It's a good reminder for us. The King James says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And I want us to focus on the fact that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. But do we walk like it? Do we act like it? Do we really believe it? I like, you know, the way the Amplified tells us, it says, <clears throat> Excuse me. Now to him who's able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes and dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. So when you think about whatever it is that you would possibly believe that you need, whatever you woke up today and you're thinking that an area of your life is lacking or there's something that would make you more complete or there's something that you're believing for or, or hoping for or wishing for, for your family, your household, your children, your spouse, your parents, your siblings, your job, your finances, uh, what your walk. Maybe you just need some direction, some clarity, some understanding. Maybe you're trying to pay your bills, take care of your household, whatever it is that you need. God's not able just to do that. He's able to do, it says, exceeding abundantly above that. So it doesn't even compare with that. But you have to understand it enough to walk in it because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we have to walk by faith and not by sight. We have to live by faith because the word says the just shall live by faith. And then when we ask for something, we have to know that we know that we know that God is able to do that and some. God is a more than enough God. And so when you begin to walk like you believe that, then as you are needing peace, your mind is so focused on him because he's the giver of it. That Isaiah 26 says uh, in verse 3, if you keep your mind staying on him, he'll give you perfect peace because you trust him. So the peace will come just because you believe him for it and in believing him for it you got to keep your mind stayed on him focused on him because he's the one going to give it to you and you get the peace automatically why because your mind stayed on him and that's what the word says is a source for you to get peace so when you begin to trust him for um say if you're trying to just pay your rent pay your bills take care of your household you say okay well the word says he shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by christ jesus if you believe he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think then you're not worried and anxious but you're doing as jesus said in matthew 6 and 33 don't worry about you know he tells us in that chapter don't worry about what you're going to eat drink or wear but he tells us in verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Do you believe God's word? Then you live according to his word. So you begin to seek him and his kingdom, his righteousness, and his righteousness is to be in right standing with him, which means that you're seeking his kingdom and to do what God wants you to do. You're seeking his kingdom and to do what he wants you to do. And in seeking what God would have you to do, he causes us to be good stewards over what we have. He causes us to be thankful for what we already got. He causes us to begin to utilize what we have and not complain about what we don't have and as we're sowing as he tells us to sow as we're spending as he tells us to spend as we're saving as he tells us to save because we're seeking to be in right standing with him we're seeking to be in his
his kingdom. We're seeking to be in relationship with him. And in seeking him, he's guiding us and leading us. And as he's doing that, he's supplying our needs. Now, he may not supply your greeds, but he will supply your needs. So you have to believe that God is your source. What happens so many times is that we'll ask God for something, but we don't really believe that he's going to do it. Or we're looking at the situation and it looks so big that we prayed, but we're not focused on the prayer. We're focused on this is big. This is a big mountain. It's a big situation. This is something that, you know, I don't know if I can get through. I don't know if I can overcome it. I don't know if my family's going to come out of it. And when you look at it like that, you take your eyes off of the source of the one who's not only able to do it and bring it to pass, but he's able to do exceeding abundantly above that. So in believing and internalizing and personalizing Ephesians 3 and 20, it makes you so focused on God because you know that he's able to give you whatever you need. He's able to do in you whatever you need done. He's able to provide for you. He pours love into you that is beyond your understanding. You don't know the breadth, the length, the depth of it and <clears throat> excuse me, he's, he gives us mercy and grace. The Bible says he daily loads us up with benefits. He's a very present help in trouble. He never leaves nor forsakes us. He has promises for us walking in his principles. So I came to encourage somebody today. Whatever you stand in need of, your focus is God. You seek his kingdom and his righteousness, but you have to know that you know that you know that he's able to do it. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. So when you focus in that. And then you begin to focus on the giver of it. You begin to focus on the source of what you stand in need of. When you begin to focus on God and know he's able, you feel a peace and a calm over you. You begin to walk in his will. You begin to walk in his anointing. You can stay in on the path he set before you. You're not easily distracted because you're focused on the one that is meeting every need that you have. The one who's answering your prayers as you're connected to him in relationship. You believe that he's able to do it. So you're not worried about anything. You're not stressed out about anything. The Bible says be anxious for nothing, but everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God and he'll give you the peace of God that passes all understanding to keep your heart and mind. That's when you give your request over to God. Stop trying to be God. You can't work it out. When there was 5,000 men plus women and children that were hungry, the multitude that was following Jesus, the disciples didn't think that they could feed the people. The people were hungry. But Jesus said, what do we have? Two fish and five loaves is what they had. But Jesus held it up and blessed it and he gave it to the disciples to distribute amongst the people. And when they distributed, they ended up with 12 baskets of fragments, scraps of food left. What I'm saying to you is he was able to do what the people needed and some. If someone else would have showed up, they would have been able to eat. The disciples could have eaten. The thing is, is that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above. So what seems to be impossible for you, it's not impossible for God. Jesus said, what's impossible for man is not impossible for God. What's impossible for man is possible for God. So remember this. This will give you a peace. This will be, give you a calm in your spirit. Whatever you stand in need of, trust God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we get this word in us today. I pray, Lord God, that we believe you and know that you are greater than any issue and problem, that you're the source of everything because you made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fullness thereof. You said if you were hungry, you wouldn't tell us. We know that you own everything. So, Father, I pray that you work in each of us, that we remember that not only are you able to do what we're not able to do, but you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can even think about doing or ask you to do. So, Father, our trust is in you today. Help us to walk like it. Help us to walk by faith. Help us to trust in you with all of our heart and not lean to our own understanding. Help us, Lord God, to cast our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. Help us, Lord God, to know that you are El Shaddai. And we thank you today for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We give you praise, glory, and honor for who you are, for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all that you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you to just trust God today. He is able to do more, more than enough. He's a more than enough God. And so um, join us every morning for prayer and word at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can do this by calling the number under the YouTube video or you can go on Facebook. I have a Facebook live page, uh, Pastor Tony Brook Brown. If you join us 
on my page at 6 a.m. You will um, join us live and we're going into the presence of God. We just trust him. We just go and stand in the gap one for another. We cast our cares on him. Uh, we worship and praise him because he's mighty and he's able. So come and join us. It's every morning, seven days a week. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please feel free to do that um, so you can get some notifications and know when I upload the videos. The scripture affirmations are Monday through Friday, but there's other times that other messages are uploaded and we need to keep the word in us and get the word in us so we can walk in the word. There's power in the word. And so I encourage you, evangelize somebody today. Tell somebody about Christ. Witness to somebody. Pour into somebody's life today. There's a hurting world out here and we are the light and the salt. We are God's vessels and instruments. Do what it is that God called you to do and God will take care of you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. See you next time. God bless you.